We know the angular momentum of a rotating object around some axis is given by I omega, where I is the rotational moment of inertia and omega is the angular velocity of that object around that axis. And we know the angular momentum of a particle, even if it's moving in a straight line, can be calculated using the equation rmv sine theta. So YouTube, today we're going to combine these two ways of looking at angular momentum and we're going to answer this one question. And that is, what is the angular momentum of a rotating object relative to a point which does not lie on the axis of rotation of that rotating object? Now I'm going to answer this question in two ways. The first being conceptually. See, if this disk is rotating, we know it has some inertia and some angular velocity around this axis of rotation. And so we can find the angular momentum around A pretty simply. Now imagine we were to take this rotating disc and while it's rotating, push it downward. This force acting downward would push this axis of rotation down towards P. Now to understand how this force is going to affect the angular momentum of this disc, I want to take a look at torque. See, there's two ways to look at torque. The first is to look at torque as a change in angular momentum over a change in time. So as we push downward on this disc, if there's any torque on it, its angular momentum is going to change. The other way to look at torque is as a force acting at a radius and some angle between them. But you'll notice, if we're pushing downward on this disc, the force downward is in the opposite direction of the radius vector extending from P to the disc. So when pushing this disc downward, Although there's a force on the disc to push it, there's going to be no torque because the force and the radius vector are 180 degrees apart, making this term zero. And so if there's no torque, there's going to be no change in angular momentum as we move this disc downward. Ultimately, what that means is the angular momentum of this disc around its axis of rotation is going to be the same as the angular momentum of this disc relative to any point in space. And that can be a little bit confusing if you go back to looking at the angular momentum of a particle, which can have an angular momentum which varies depending on what point in space we choose to look at. Now I've shown you this conceptually, but I want to prove this mathematically now. And to do that, we're going to take a look at a slightly different situation. I want to take two small two kilogram point masses which are rotating on the end of a one meter long light thin rod. And these two point masses are constrained to rotate around this axis A rate. And I'm gonna show you mathematically that the angular momentum of these two particles relative to axis A is the same as the angular momentum around this point P down here. So first let's solve for the angular momentum around axis A here. Realizing we have two point masses, we're gonna have two kilograms, moving at three meters per second, at some radius, one half of a meter, that's half the length of the rod, away from this axis A. And that leaves us with an angular momentum of six kilogram meters squared per second. Now looking at things relative to point P, we have two different masses and they're not equidistant away from this point P here. So we're gonna to have to look at the masses individually. So looking at the angular momentum of the top mass first, we're gonna have this two kilogram mass moving at three meters per second at a radius of four and a half meters away from this point P. Plus we're gonna have this two kilogram mass moving at three meters per second, four minus a half meter, so that's gonna be three and a half meters away from this point P. Now realize, relative to point P, this top mass is moving to the right that would be producing an angular momentum clockwise around this point P, or using the right hand rule, into the page. Looking at the bottom mass, it's moving to the left, so that's gonna be producing a angular momentum out of the page. So because these two angular momenta are in opposite directions, we need to account for the fact that this angular momentum, that is the angular momentum of this bottom mass, is gonna be in the negative direction. But if you work the math out on this, you'll find the angular momentum around point P is six kilogram meters squared per second. And what this does is prove that the angular momentum of a rotating body around some axis of rotation is the same as the angular momentum of that rotating body around any point in space. So I hope somebody on the internet found this useful.
And on that note, that's all for now.